Made possible through support from ARC Thrift Stores, CCDC Colorado Cross Disability Coalition, Developmental Pathways, and the ARC of Aurora. A Think Change Training. Hi everyone, I am Hani Rayleigh with Think Change and the ARC of Aurora, here today with Hazel Heckers from the Colorado Bureau of Investigations. Um, and what we wanna do is talk a little bit about what CBI does, who Hazel is, um, and learn a little bit more about the ways in which we can interact with CBI um, for and on behalf of people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. If you've seen any of our products before, you know that we typically do this in person, but COVID-19 is in play right now, and so we are getting creative and we are both going to do this interview uh, remotely from each other. So thanks so much for tuning in. Um, before we get going on questions, Hazel, tell us a little bit about who you are, what your background is. Yeah, well, um, I came to the victim assistance field 33 years ago uh, when it was a brand new field. I had been a therapist prior to that and was working in hospice at the time and had a really good friend who was a mayor who said, I think my city could use your skills and I think you would really like being a victim advocate. We're starting up a program. Would you like to join us? And I said, wow. yeah, like for a year or so, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still here. Here you years are. Later. Totally. Yeah. Totally. It's, it's, it's crazy how we all come to the field, isn't it? You know, I think we go where we're intended to be and we might get there directly or we might get there indirectly like I did, but we all get where we're meant to be. You got it. Absolutely. Well, tell us about the CBI. What does the CBI yeah. do? So the Colorado Bureau of Investigation, um, a lot of people don't know about us. And the first mistake that people make about us is that we are not the FBI. Um, sure. The FBI is a federal agency and we're a state agency. Um, so we're the state investigators. And we have a couple of divisions people are probably really familiar with, like our um, division that does the gun background checks and concealed oh, carry sure. permits. I think everybody knows they're around. I think most people who are in professions that require fingerprints know about our identification bureau and the fingerprint process that we go through. And um, I think a lot of people have heard about our crime lab. So a lot of people know that we have crime labs that do a lot of crime scene investigations, um, the CSIs of CBI. Um, sure. But I think a lot of people don't realize what our investigators do. And our investigations division is pretty big. Um, we're small on people, but big on responsibilities. <laughs> So we respond to a lot of different things, everything from human trafficking to black market marijuana to any kind of major crime like homicides, um, sex assault, sex assault on a child, um, child porn rings, child luring, those kinds of things. Um, we also work with the gaming communities to ensure safety for families and people visiting the gaming communities. Um, and we work with um, a lot of different issues um, with all of those units. Sure. Um, but we also have an identity theft, fraud, and cyber crimes unit. And uh -huh. that's who the victim advocates are attached to. Um, we do victim assistance with victims of identity theft, fraud, any cyber crime. Um, and we also do victim assistance for um, victims in homicides, cold cases and for the family members of missing persons. So wow. we have a broad thing that we do as victim advocates, but we're, we're attached to the ID theft and fraud unit because there's just so little support for Absolutely. victims out there. Absolutely. And so our you, team is really dedicated to that. Does your team interface with like local law enforcement or adult protective services? Yeah, so our, as a whole, investigations works very closely with local law enforcement. We work with um, the local law enforcement as our partners. Um, when we respond to our crimes, most of the time it's their jurisdiction and we're being invited in as a partner oh, okay. and we're offering them our expertise and our assistance. We frequently will take over the investigation, but we're brought in and come in in a partnership with those local law enforcement agencies and we love working with them. As victim advocates, we work with 
adult protection and a lot of community agencies um, mm -hmm. you know we'll work with places like Denver Options and we work really well with the ARC and Aurora we just sure. love working with you all um, any chance we get we work with you all feeling um, is mutual <laughs> all things. We just, you know, we can't do our jobs alone. None of us can do our jobs alone. We all have to have some other people in our community, people that have their expertise is different than ours, uh, people that we can partner with. It's so important. Uh, we just, none of us, we all get in this crazy idea that we can do it all, but we can't. We need well, and it really allows all of our organizations to specialize and to support each other through our specialization. So, I think anytime we're able to collaborate with folks that are really like narrowly focused on making sure that justice is accessed for all people and certainly folks with intellectual and developmental disabilities, it's a good partner to have. And so speaking of, do, do, have you seen, so we're in the middle of a pandemic, life is crazy. Um, has that changed your work at all? It has, it's changed our work tremendously. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of it is, how much we can do in person. Yeah. However, you know, we are part of law enforcement and law enforcement are first responders. And a lot hasn't changed for us in that we still respond. We're still there. We still do whatever we can to make sure that no victim is left behind and that no one feels like they are less valued. Um, sure. because of the pandemic. So we do really work hard for that. But the other thing we've seen change, especially in the field of identity theft, fraud, and cyber crimes, we have really seen criminals love to take advantage of anything, and they pay close attention. And they know the pandemic is going on, and they know people have vulnerabilities related to the pandemic they're at home more often they're online more often and they're lonely yeah and they have needs to reach out and they don't have access to some of the usual sources that they have for getting information for being informed about what's going on you know if you listen to the news it's all about one thing you know it's all about COVID or what's going on with the pandemic or what we're seeing in terms of um, social change that's going on now but you're not focusing on some of the things we usually do to educate people about scams for example sure sure and so it's kind of a perfect storm for people to be victimized and i think that it hits the community of people with intellectual and developmental disabilities possibly harder than many other communities because there are so many vulnerabilities and I, I want to be really clear when I'm talking about a vulnerability I'm talking about a vulnerability to crime as seen by the criminal sure. so it doesn't matter how strong you are and how capable you are if the criminal sees you as being vulnerable they will target you yeah absolutely and we have seen that during this pandemic. We have seen a huge increase in romance scams mm -hmm. and a big increase in unemployment scams and in um, extortion online and all sorts of other, anything that, that they can exploit using cyber crimes, telephone, um, and especially the internet, especially things like Facebook and social media any kind of exploitation and you know i think that we do a big disservice to a lot of our community because when we talk about these crimes on the whole we talk about they want your money mm -hmm. and they want your id so everybody has their id to give but a lot of people think well i don't have any money yeah so i'm not at risk not. yeah absolutely and I think that we as service providers often do that same thing. Well, why would they go after him or her? They don't have any money. Um, so there's nothing to lose or they're not their own um, payee. They have a rep payee. So Absolutely. they're safe um, or somebody has a conservatorship. They're safe. We don't worry about them. But the reality is the scammers know that too. Mm, and they're sure. able to figure that out very, very quickly. And then they do something even more insidious than taking your money, which is that they use those victims as money mules, um, which is a money mover um, uh -huh. that helps them launder money. And you don't have to have any money. You don't have to be in charge of your own money. You don't even have to have a bank account for the scammers to use you in that way. And what they're doing then is making you a criminal. 
you're an accomplice to whatever they're doing. And most of the time, they're part of an organized crime ring. So they're laundering money for human trafficking, for drug trafficking, even for terrorist activities. And they've just made someone a part of that. But they do it in such a sneaky way that you think you've fallen in love with someone online. Or eat, not even love, you just made a good friend. Yeah, you went to yeah. a chat room, a friend, there's a lot of friends meet friends rooms out there and you go and you meet somebody and you think they're great and you guys are just chatting and then the next thing you know they want to know if they can send you money sure. would you go pick up money for me at western union or at MoneyGram, and then wire it to me or wire it to my cousin or hey my aunt is going to send me something could you get it to me and then right then you're part of that criminal you're activity. part of it yeah and yeah. so often um the general community doesn't think of all of the different ways you can become a victim outside of just the stuff and you know concrete examples that having to be a player in criminal activity is not something people always think of and we know at the arc of aurora and at think change that if you have a disability you are more likely to be a victim um, not just of physical abuse, but also of some of the abuses that you were just speaking about. So knowing that um, folks with disabilities and folks with IDD um, are more likely to become victims, is there anything specific that your victim advocates do in, in terms of working with victims with intellectual and developmental disabilities? Well, I, first I'm gonna give a shout out to my team because they rock. Ooh, I'm sure. <laughs> We're really small, but we're really mighty. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I have two full-time victim advocates who work with me, Poppy, oh. Joe, and Bernie. Uh, they're both amazing um, and also both bilingual in Spanish. So if you have awesome. somebody listening who wants to speak with someone in Spanish, um, they're available. Cool. Um, and they work really, really hard um, to make sure that they're well-educated and well-informed about how to interact mm -hmm. with people with all sorts of needs, um, whether it's a cultural need or a language need or some sort of accommodation for a disability. So we've had some training that we've taken through Arc of Aurora. Mm -hmm. We've had some other trainings that we've taken through the Office for Victims of Crime. Um, and they do do a few extra things. Um, one of the extras is that they make sure that they find out are you connected with anybody? Do you work with ARC? Do you yeah. work with um, this group or that group? And if you do, is it okay if we contact your case manager? Sure. Can we bring them in on the call? We are really focused on self-determination and on empowerment. And so we want it to be the choice of the person we're talking with. So we'll ask them, you know, is it okay with you? Or could you call Jeff or Jim or Mary sure. or whomever it is and let them know that you've connected with us? and see if they'd be willing to do a three-way conversation so that you hear everything we're saying to them yeah. and that you know you're a part of that whole conversation um, and then you know it might be that we do need to access some other resources um, get you all involved to help us with understanding a particular need that somebody with a certain type of disability might have and Fortunately, we have such a great working relationship with you that we're able to do that, even if it's not one of your consumers. Um, yeah. You're there for us to help us and be our, our experts and really support us in that. Um, we also have part of our team is our hotline team. So we have a 24-hour hotline. And our hotline staff is great about knowing when somebody does have um, a disability of any sort, sure. um, but especially alert to IDD cases, and then they will call us right away. You know, instead of saying, well, I'll call them in the morning. Yeah. They'll say, you know, we're going to patch you through. We're going to get you through to them right now. Um, and I'm on call 24 7, so they can get someone through to me pretty much whenever they need to. Oh, excellent. And are you, are victims advocates involved? by law enforcement or do people who are victims themselves sometimes contact you directly? Yeah, it really depends on the law enforcement agency here at CBI, oh, okay. contact us directly. Sure. Um, we do get involved, law enforcement often gets us involved, our own agents ask us to get involved. Mm -hmm. In our cases, we have law enforcement, I would say from all over the state, but really it's all over the country, who call us and ask us for assistance and support but we also take direct calls from victims so they can call us directly. One of the unique things about our role as victim advocates at CBI, we see in a lot of scams and a lot of other 
forms of identity theft and fraud that the person who is being victimized knows the person who's victimizing them and sometimes has an intimate relationship with them. They're a parent, um, they're a sibling, they're someone that they have some sort of a long-term ongoing relationship with. And above all, they don't want to get that person in trouble. Yeah. But they need the victimization to stop. Absolutely. And so one of the benefits that we have is that we can help stop the victimization, especially ID theft scams and frauds. Mm -hmm. and cyber crimes. We can help stop that abuse and we can help protect the person ongoing so that the abuse doesn't come back or continue without getting that person in trouble, you know, yeah, without sure. moving forward with an arrest or a prosecution. Now, if the victim tells us, yep, I want them to go away, I, then we're yeah. more than happy to help. <laughs> but if they really don't, and, and oftentimes they don't. Um, sure. And that's the reason that they don't call traditional law enforcement is that they don't want to get their mom or their brother in trouble. Yeah. Or often their caregiver. I mean, most, a lot of times, not most, but a lot of times individuals that are being victimized are really being victimized by their caregiver. And so they are completely reliant upon all of those activities of daily living. And so if they were to report that individual, what then would happen? And sometimes that, the fear of the unknown is in place too. Um, and that's why it's great that we've got all sorts of connections with service providers and relationships um, with people that are really there to support individuals in general outside of individuals who have been victimized. Yeah, and you know, those relationships are so important. Yeah, absolutely. We know it, I mean, it makes sense to us, right? Um, personally, and so if an individual is feeling like maybe they need additional victim support. Um, do they contact the hotline? What is the what would be the next best process? Well, they have a lot of choices. So they could contact us through the hotline, and we'll make sure that you have the hotline number. And Absolutely, we'll post it to the show audience. notes. So they can contact us through the hotline. It's, like I said, it's available twenty four seven. So people can call twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. You know, every day of the year. Um, I actually, I used to say 365 days a year. And then someone that I was working with um, through Arc of Aurora, um, one of your consumers said, well, what about Leap Day? Will they answer the phones on Leap Day? <laughs> so 366 <laughs> days a year um, will answer the phones. And including, that includes holidays um, and yeah. weekends. Um, and if they would prefer just to speak with me or with Bobby Joe or Bernie, they can mm -hmm. certainly call us directly and speak with us directly as well. So they Excellent. can call us either way. That's fine. And we'll also take emails if people prefer to put something in email. Sure. Some people, especially if it is a cyber crime, they want to email us because they want to show us everything they've seen. This is yeah. the screenshot of this. This is that. Here's the picture of the person that I thought I was in love with until I found out they were not, not good players yeah yeah <laughs> that's very cool and so how does a does the process ever end with your victim's advocate like what is um if an if a client or an individual was reached out to you directly um what should they expect so they should expect to be treated completely respectfully you know we really focus there's a victim's rights amendment that requires that all victims are treated with dignity, fairness, and respect. And we just laugh at that because we think, well, we've always done that. We're victim advocates. Of course, advocates. Yeah. Of course we do. <laughs> uh, but I, I think it's important to, to make that very clear to people that that is our primary goal, mm -hmm. is to treat the victim well and to sh ensure that the victim is safe, physically safe, um, financially safe, sure. um, safe online, emotionally safe, that they're in a safe place. So we may do some safety planning and ask a few safety questions first. But then we'll just, I mean, it's really simple. We just ask them to tell their story. And then we figure out what they want. After they've told us their story, what, what do you want from us? How would you like us to help? And for some people, they just want help filing a police report. Other people, sure. they really want us to help with everything. And so we don't have a timeline, you know, it's not like, oh, we'll work with you for an hour or we'll work with you for a week. Um, we're with that person until that person feels like we've done everything for them that we can. Um, and so if that takes, I have 
some people I've, I'm still working with 10, 12 years later. Oh, really? Oh, incredible. And it's not every day, all day, but once a week or, you know, once a month or whenever an issue comes up, um, we're right there and we're working and we're talking together. Um, other people, you know, it's really quick. What they need is just a, a quick answer to a question or to make something stop or to correct yeah. a credit report. Um, and we'll do that. And then just let them know the door is always open. Um, they can always come back. Oh, what a fabulous resource. I mean, for many of the folks we work with and, you know, folks in our own community. So we thank you for all of the work that you guys do. You're super important um, to certainly the folks that we have supported in common. And we know that you're an important resource for the state of Colorado. Is oh, there anything, you. Hazel, that you think that um, folks with intellectual and developmental disabilities or their families or the service provider world or advocates, um, Anything else that we should know? You know, I just think it's important to know that because you have a disability, that doesn't mean that you will not be a victim. Mm -hmm. um, so please know that if you are a victim and you want to give us a call, you will be treated with respect and you will be believed and we will hear you. So I think that's really important to say because I have personally experienced many people calling out to law enforcement or reaching out to another agency for support and feeling that they weren't listened to or weren't believed. That as soon as the, the person on the other line knew that they had a disability, they stopped listening and they started being condescending and um, treating the person like a child. And that is not something that will happen at CBI. You will be heard, you will be listened to, you will be believed. We will hear your story and we will do everything we can to help you. And I think that it's important for your family to know that as well, that this is a safe place for you and your family to come and to come for support. And I hope that the service providers already think of us that way. And if you don't, I, you know, I hope you do. We're also really open to feedback. I mean, we'd like someone to tell us, hey, I called or my child called or my cousin called and I didn't feel they got treated well. This is what you could have done to do that better because we only learn from experience. And so we'd like to learn from you all as well. So we've, we don't have all the answers. We have a lot of the answers when it comes to law enforcement and crime and what's going on in the cyber world. We've got a lot of answers. But we don't have all the answers and we we need to learn from you all as much as you need to learn from us so we'll tell you about crime and you can tell us about you and what it is that you need um people are their own best advocate and we we hope that people feel that we allow them to be that's fabulous well i can't thank you enough hazel for joining us for a very strange interview <laughs> doing it remotely is not oh, always dear. what we like to do but we just thank you so much for you and your team's work um, in helping to address victims across Colorado and for your continued focus on folks with intellectual and developmental disabilities. We know that not every agency is so narrowly focused on making sure that um, justice is accessed by all folks. And so we just thank you so much. Um, viewers, thank you for tuning in. I will post anything we referred to in our show notes and transcripts. Um, but we look forward to seeing you again in the future for more products from Think Change and the Arc of Aurora. Take care. Thank you all for having me. Think Change. Talks, trainings, and tools to help in your work for or with people with intellectual and other developmental disabilities. Learn more at www.thinkchange.training.